Hello, welcome to Gus Mittal Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. In this series, we play through each of the battles in the American Grand Campaign in Close Combat 4, The Battle of the Bulge. And we use historical World War II US Army doctrine to plan and conduct each battle. This is the strategic map. It is 0800 hours on December 16, 1944, and the weather is overcast. US forces have no air support, no artillery, and no supply drops. The next battle is at Losheim between the US 422nd RCT, 106th Division, and the German 12th Volksgrenadier Division. The village of Losheim should be held at all costs. The three-storey buildings at the centre of town and the Hotel de Losheim are the dominant strongholds of Losheim. Holding the road to the Schnee Eiffel is also critical so that you can have an avenue of retreat. On the US side is an American infantry battle group from the 422nd Infantry Regiment, under command of Captain Horst. It moves slowly and reserves are nearly depleted. The company consists of three platoons. First platoon is infantry. Second platoon is also infantry. And third platoon is a mix of anti-tank guns and support weapons. Once again, I will swap the scouts from second platoon with the medium machine gun from third platoon. Let's rename the squads off camera for ease of reference. Now, let's review each of the squads. 1 1 is 1st Platoon Headquarters. 1 2 is a BAR squad. 1 3 is a rifle squad. 1 4 is an M9 bazooka team. 1-5 is a Browning 30 caliber medium machine gun. 2-1 is 2nd Platoon Headquarters. 2-2 two two is a BAR squad. 2-3 is a rifle squad. 3-5 is a recon team. 2-5 is an M9 bazooka team. 3-1 is 3rd Platoon Headquarters. 3-2 is a 57mm anti-tank gun. 3-3 is a 57mm anti-tank gun. 3-4 is an 81mm medium mortar. And 2-4 is a Browning 30 caliber medium machine gun. Next, Let's look at the map and conduct a commander's estimate of the situation. Our mission is to guard against an enemy advance through Losheim. The village of Losheim sits at a crossroads atop a ridgeline with the road to Udenbreth to the north, to Schneeifel to the northwest, Dusburg to the south, and the Reich to the east. Prominent buildings include the church and the Hotel de Losheim. East of the village, the ground drops away sharply to the low ground. The area around the village consists of light woods and open fields. As a result of the fall of the ground, line of sight falls away, and observation east of the village is quite limited, even from the multi-storey buildings. The buildings provide good cover and excellent concealment. However, the terrain provides cover and concealment to an attacker right up to the eastern fringes of the village. There are no notable obstacles to mounted or dismounted movement, so an attack can come from any direction. The crossroads is the only key terrain in the area. Avenues of approach could include from the east or from the south. The Germans could attack up the road, using the road for vehicles and the light woods for infantry. They could infiltrate up to the crest of the hill, then use smoke and the buildings on the edge of the village to mask the initial assault. Or, the Germans could swing around the south and attack from an unexpected direction and outflank the village entirely. So, the Americans should establish killing zones to cover either approach, one to the east and one to the south. The first course of action is for the Americans to form a tight defensive position centred on the village. First platoon would take the southern half of the village, including the hotel. Second platoon would take the northern half of the village, including the church. 
Third platoon would support from a depth position to the rear. A 57mm anti-tank gun would cover the gap between the platoons, and another would cover the open ground in 2nd platoon's position. All three platoons would create a crossfire on the most likely avenue of approach. Finally, the scouts would occupy an observation post to the southeast to provide early warning of the German attack and to alert the company to any movement to the south. This plan focuses on the crossroads, but while the scouts would provide early warning, 1st platoon would still find it difficult to pivot south to meet a flanking attack, and would be fighting alone with 2nd platoon isolated to the north. The second course of action is for the Americans to extend their defensive position to get better observation into the dead ground and deny the southern approach. 1st platoon would defend the village itself. 2nd platoon would dig in southeast of the village, looking into the dead ground and refusing the right flank. 3rd platoon would remain to the rear with 57mm anti-tank guns placing a crossfire where the road emerges from the dead ground. This plan would benefit from flanking fire on the most likely avenue of approach. But 1st platoon would be very spread out, and the proposed location for 2nd platoon seems more appropriate for an armoured element capable of counterattacking over the open ground. I've made my decision and have placed the platoons and squads in position. First platoon north of the crossroads. Second platoon south of the crossroads. A recon team to the southeast. And third platoon to the rear, with the anti-tank guns covering the approaches to the crossroads. And so we begin. A German Sturmgeschütz assault gun. And infantry assaulting through the woods. 3-3 three, three lines up a shot. But is destroyed. The Sturmgeschütz pops smoke. A granite verfer drops rounds on the gun crew. German troops are attacking from the woods either side of the road. Inman's team gets into position. The mortar drops rounds. The second anti-tank gun is destroyed. Not a good start to the battle. Germans are putting intense pressure on 1st platoon. Dittmann on the bazooka knocks out the Sturmgeschütz. 
Barton's BAR squad moves up to flank the German attack. Inman's squad surrenders. Second platoon now gets into the fight. German troops in the open are under a murderous crossfire.
135, the recon team now scouts into the rear of the German position. Total American victory. The battle ended because the Germans' force morale got too low and they were forced to retreat off the map. The Americans gained control of the map and the German battle group was forced to disband. The Americans won the battle because they control a greater number of crucial victory locations than the Germans. The Americans took six killed, four wounded, three surrendered, and two guns destroyed. The Germans took 26 killed, 21 wounded, and one tank destroyed. Let's examine the American squads. Dittmann and Juarez share credit for the Sturmgeschutz. Staff Sergeant Yancey is awarded the Silver Star. Private Wright is awarded the Combat Infantryman's Badge. So far, the campaign remains a decisive American victory. So, what did we learn? For the second time, I lost both anti-tank guns. This will cost me later. And, for the third battle in a row, recon seems a dangerous job. I need to reflect on this, and perhaps change my approach. More importantly, this battle demonstrated the power of the crossfire that is generated by interlocking arcs of fire, or mutual exchange of fire. Both 1st and 2nd platoon were placed to fire across each other's fronts. While initially successful, the German assault withered in the face of flanking fire from both 1st and 2nd platoon. German infantry could not cross the open ground and the assault south of the road failed quickly. The assault north of the road also quickly bogged down and the leading troops in the buildings were pinned down and killed. The troops to the rear were also pinned down and could not advance to support their comrades. German morale collapsed, and they retreated. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for the next episode.